Hi, and welcome to another episode of Careering, where we interview fearless females about what makes them tick both in business and in life. I'm your host, Lori Halter, and I can't wait to have you here today's episode. Let's jump right in. Hey, careering fans. I am on today with someone really special. I recently just got introduced to her from Brooke Furness, your friend and mine, and I thought she would make a wonderful addition to our show. Welcome to Sarah Vonderhorst of Genesis. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I mean, I'm just thrilled to talk about this topic because you and I were introduced through Brooke, uh, through a mutual industry friend. And as we got to talking, you told me you're a single mom and how difficult sometimes it is to fit in as a single mom. And I stopped you in your tracks and said, hang on, hang on, hang on. This needs to be a careering episode. So we decided to jump in and tackle this together today. Well, thank you so much for yeah, making I'm excited this. to have you on. So let's start with, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, tell us about um, where you work, your family life, your kids, your time as a mom. Um, Well, I am a market manager for Genesis, um, the automotive brand. So I was with Hyundai for 20 years as a district sales manager. And then I've started with Genesis at the beginning of May. Wow. Um, Yeah. I have um, two sort of preteen boys and I've been a single mom for about 10 years. Wow. So um, their father lives out of state. So I do have full custody and I am full time mom. I have to tell you hats off to you because I also got a divorce within the last year. So mine is is uh, more recent. And I have two teens and it is kind of jaw dropping the amount that you have to do when you're on your own. When you don't have that other person to help with carpools and, you know, some of the school related things, the school related emails alone, I feel like can absolutely <laughs> drown. You. Like I might have gone back to school just yet. Uh, they're going back in a week, but I'm already getting like PTSD from the amount of emails that are happening <laughs> <laughs> from school and sports. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And they have, you know, multiple teachers now because mine just started junior high. So yeah. You know, from all the different teachers and oh my gosh I remember that transition so how old are your kids now 11 and 13 okay yeah I remember that transition mine are 14 and 16 so this is this next year they'll both be in high school for the first time together but I do remember going from like the sweet like individual relationship with that one teacher in elementary school to getting like you know at the time they were both in middle school so like 14 different teachers that you had to keep track of and all of their patients yeah and now they do the conferences on zoom so yeah. you're jumping every minute to a different zoom link and I'm like well what do you teach again which teacher are yeah you? Good for you. There was this last year. I was like, um, I just give up. Like, if you guys aren't doing well, let me know. I'll talk to that teacher. But otherwise, like, sorry, it's just been too busy. And my mom was like, I can't believe you did that. I'm like, mom, you don't understand. Like, now it's like five minute Zoom calls. And there's really not even that much time to talk to them if there is an issue. I'd rather just schedule like a a private meeting, right? Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Rather than I was on a Zoom call with the PE teacher. <laughs> I don't even think she knew who my kid was. Isn't that so. funny? Yeah. You're like, what can you tell me about PE? I have, the, I have kind of a funny story about this. I have, one of my kiddos was, um, was their only bad grade was PE. And, I, and this was in elementary school. And I was like, I don't, can you help me understand how you get a bad grade in PE? I, I'm just not really sure how that happens. Like, is she bad at throwing or, or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> It came down to, I think if I remember right, it came down to level of, um, you know, uh, level of trying. And I was like, oh yeah, that, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Got it. (laughs) But there are so many things about school, like jumping into school. One of the things you and I talked about is as the school year begins, as we all know, as moms and dads, we're rushing around, we're getting kids to practice. We're getting, you know, the PTA. And you said, you know, it's really, really tough as a single mom, one, to keep up with that. And two, almost to feel like fitting into that crowd. So I want to kind of unpack that a little bit. What have you noticed are some of the challenges with being a single, not only a single mom, but a single working mom that can't, you know, be at all the mommy. This was more when they're little, but all the play dates and like those ways that we create community among moms. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, um, there's different challenges for the, you know, the more struggling single mom versus the successful single mom versus, you know, the stay at home mom versus everybody has their own set of challenges. And it's just, you know, people 
having to recognize um, that everybody has different challenges and that everybody's in a different place and respecting that and helping each other. And luckily I have found many, um, you know, my own support network of other moms who sort of see the drama the way, you know, from the same perspective and we work together and help each other out. And it's not always, you know, one for one type of exchange, you know, sometimes when I can, when I can put in more, when I can do more of the driving, when I can do more of the hosting, I do. And, yes. you know, when I need a little bit more help, I lean on them a little bit more. Well, I love that. And I think that's so true. I think we tend to, as even for ourselves, give ourselves such a hard time. And if we just looked at it more as, like you said, like, let's give more when we can give more. And then let's like rest when we need to rest. Because I know I used to, I kind of have this joke. I used to have tell people, oh yeah, I work part-time. And then I'm, I'm also a mom. The truth was I was running an agency and probably working like 50 hours a week. You know, so a friend of mine finally said, can you please stop talking to people about being a part-time? You don't work part-time. You work full-time and like own it. You know, she wasn't saying it a bad way. She's saying, own it. You work full-time and you're a mom full-time. And so like, don't discount yourself by trying to pretend like you're working part-time. You own an agency. (laughs) And so I like this idea that I think even as our own worst enemy, we can like really come down on ourselves as mothers about what we're not doing and what we are doing. And uh, maybe just like rethinking that give and take mindset. Yes. And what do, what do you think has been the most helpful as you've worked with other moms and dads in terms of helping you out, like with being a single mom? Um, it's learning to accept help or learning yes. to ask for help when you need it. I mean, that's the hardest. I want to I want to do it on my own always, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's the hardest part is probably asking for help. Asking for help. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing about that, I really like that. And the thing about that is when you start doing it, I feel like what you're teaching your kids is that a community is there to take care. So like, I think it's so great. My kids have really grown up with a, a society of parents around them that have cared for them and bet, you know, taken them to carpool. And as I'm in a meeting or I'm out of town at a conference. Mm-hmm. And so I think there is really, this nice benefit to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we all have, we all have some of that mom guilt, I call yes. it, right? So that's, I struggle with that a little bit. Um, but like you said, I remind myself, Hey, you're only one person, right? I can't, yes. I can't split myself in two so that I'm at everything for both my kids. And I can't split myself you know, in a third for doing, getting my job done. So, yeah, I think as I've had more of these interviews, what's been really fascinating to me is I'm starting to realize from other women that I interview uh, and from looking at my own self, as my kids get older, that what we're really teaching the kids when we take the time for ourselves or when we allow other people to care for them is that you can't do it all. And it's, it's kind of ridiculous to assume that you can do it all. I think we're doing them a great disservice, especially our daughters, if we're trying to show that we've got it all together. Because then what happens is when they're an adult and they don't have it all together, they feel bad, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so I've been really working more on trying to show them that I'm real and that sometimes I do not have it all together and that I'm a hot mess and that everybody's just going to have to work together. <laughs> Absolutely. I said it. I I apologize to my kids when, you know, hey, mom made a mistake or mom. Yes. I'm could have done better, but here's what I did wrong. And here's what I'm going to do the next time. I think that's so important. And I've talked actually with a lot of uh, women who are like, you know, therapists who talk about how important that is showing that it's okay to make a mistake. It matters how you handle it. And it matters what you do moving forward. So I think that's beautiful. Well, one of the things we also shared, and I thought this was fascinating because I found it too, is sometimes dads are more uh, welcoming and easier to work with than moms. (laughs) So let's talk about that. Like in the carpools or I think there's kind of this um, still kind of the stigma that you see in every single movie of like the moms that are the head of the PTA and that run the school, you know? And so do you think that's still happening? So how can we work together to sort of ensure that those individual groups aren't, aren't like still perpetuating as adults? Right. Yeah. I think it's a, you know, an insecurity thing maybe. And, and people say, oh, it's because it's because I live in this town or it's because it's because of this area. You yeah. know, I, I think it exists everywhere. Um, but there's just, you know, some insecurity maybe on some yeah. people's parts, but um, ultimately, you know, Hey, I work in the car industry. So I, I work with men. I, I have three brothers, no sisters. I have two sons, no daughters. My whole world is, is sort of guys. Yeah. men. So, I mean, 
Hey, like I, I usually I drive a demo, so I'm always driving a nice new car. You know, nice. so there's always something to talk about there. And my boys play sports, so um, so I just have that. You know, most of the dads go to practice, and yes. uh, so that's who I see on a regular basis, and um, and that's just sort of you know the, the connections that I've made on some level. And I always, you know always try to meet their wives and, and I'll text. If I have to text the husband something about practice, I'll help with the wife on the text as well. Cause I, I yeah. want to be respectful and I don't want to spark any sort of animosity. Right. Um, I'm probably overly careful about that. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's this unwritten thing too, that happens. It's so funny that like the dads aren't necessarily clued into the network that the moms are. So if you're primarily talking to the dads and texting the dads, you may not hear about like the boys going for ice cream after after practice, right? right? Or like there it's, I think it's so fascinating. There's this whole kind of social thing that happens among moms. And when the moms are in contact that maybe the dads don't all, aren't always privy to. So if you do have a situation where you have sons and most of the carpooling and things are happening with the dads, you may not hear about some of that stuff that the moms are sharing among themselves. Yeah. Luckily I, you know, at least in some networks, but you know, I've got, I've got a network of moms that I talk to too. So I do hear most of that. Yeah. Um, but being in a, in, I'm in that, like the baseball dad, uh, text group and it's really allowed me, you know, I get, I, I hear first when there's, you know, tryouts coming up or there's a new training opportunity, yes. things like that, that I would not hear about if I wasn't in this dad group. So I'm just real quiet. I don't say a lot. I just, <laughs> I just take the information in and use it <laughs> to open doors for my son. I love it. This sounds like actually what I do for my teams when they're in the car. I'm just like as quiet as can be. I just want to hear exactly what they're talking about. So I know what's going on. (laughs) And the car is like the best place to connect with your kids because like, you know, they, it's just, you're not looking them in the eye. Yes. They tend to open up a little bit more. It's great. I agree. I would say that. And like, when you're ready for bed at 11 PM, it's the other time they're ready to like have a deep discussion. You're like, I just want to go to sleep. (laughs) For sure. Well, how do you find um, to balance it all? We talked a bit about like carpools and, you know, leaning on the other dads, leaning on other moms. What is, what would you say is your kind of best hack for women for how to work full time, be a mom full time and really be on all the after school sports and activities full time? So my trick, I mean, my, that drives my kids crazy. I make lists. Like I'm a okay. list person. So I mean, like priorities I make, you know, like, like today I had a bunch of things I was balancing out. I had, I had a timeline of my day because yeah. I want to make sure I don't miss any of those things. But I also make lists, like, for example, at the beginning of the summer, I sit down with my kids and say, what are the, th- what are your priorities for the summer? What are your goals for the summer? What are the things you want to make sure you do? And I write like, oh, mom, another list, you and your lists, you know, they, <laughs> they, they hate it. But then when there's like, when we have a free day, and, you know, when you ask your kids, what would you like to do today? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. You know, then I pull, oh, well, you really wanted to do this. How about we do that today? Oh, I okay. That. I feel like you could really be, use your time so much more effectively and so much more efficiently if you have those priorities written down ahead of time. Yes. I love that. And I actually do that as well. And also I'm a big list person. There must be something, but I think like as a working mom, you just as a mom, you need to be organized, yeah. right? Just in general. Yeah. But like, I'll do that for my kids. And mine is more of what to you would make summer fabulous. That was actually one of the beginning questions at the beginning of the summer. Like, Perfect. what is it that makes summer important to you? And then for me, we make sure we hit those things and the rest can maybe fall away. Cause yeah. I think there's a lot of noise, but if you, if you cut down to the three to five thing, and I'll do that during the holidays too, little secret. Oh. I'm not a huge fan of Christmas. I know everybody is going to hate me for it, but there's just so much happening during the holidays. And yeah. so all at the beginning of like, right after Thanksgiving, I'm like, okay, what do we, what are the things that we have to do to make sure these holidays and Christmas and New Year's feels exciting and happy for you? And those things I ensure I hit the rest. Like if we're not making sugar cookies, if we're not, you know, doing this or that, and it's not on their list, then I just kind of, if we get to a great, and if we don't, no worries. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. yeah. I was talking to Carrie Wise on one of these and she was so smart. She said, I make sure the big things matter. And she said, and the big things may not be what you think. A big thing to my daughter may be me going to a soccer game versus like an eighth grade graduation. 
you know, so she's really saying like, talk to your kids about what the big things are and then make sure you're there for those. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Well, I so appreciate you being on today. I so appreciate you tackling this issue. Cause like I said, when we were talking, I said, Ooh, that's so good. Cause this is kind of whispered about this, like, you know, the difficulty of getting into like the mom club. (laughs) This is all about us bringing to the surface things that we need to talk about as career driven moms. So I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Do you want to do a shout out to your kids? Sure. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Luke. <laughs> and if people want to get a hold of you, where can they find you? They can find me on LinkedIn, Sarah yep. Vonderhorst. Um, That's probably the best place to go. Probably the best place. All right. Well, Sarah, thanks so much for coming on today. I really appreciate your time and talk about this, uh, this important issue. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave us a review or rating on your podcast player of choice. If you have a future female leader that you would like to hear on careering, please leave us her name and contact information at the link below. Thank you. Thank you.